Hello, Keith Rucker here at newsmachinery.org. Guys, today I am in Nashville, Tennessee, and we are out here with the Nashville Steam Preservation Society. And you see behind us, we got a big steam locomotive, and they're in the process of restoring that. So I'm gonna let them tell you a little bit about this locomotive and tell you a little bit about its history and project they got going on here. So Sounds good. Well, thank you, Keith, for coming up and dealing with us today. And uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. I uh, just want to give you a little introduction of myself. I'm Shane Metter. I'm the president of the National Steam Preservation Society. And behind us here, we have uh, Locomotive 576. Uh, this locomotive was built uh, by the American Locomotive Company in 1942. It's connected to New York. And it was operated and owned by the Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis Railway. And it operated through about 1952. And then 1953, it was donated to Centennial Park here in Nashville and where it had set uh, until last January uh, when we actually moved it out of the park and you know, got it over here and now we're starting to restore the locomotive. Great, great. So uh, so what's the plans for it once you get it back up and going and what kind of time frame y'all looking at on the project here? Well, the plan right now obviously is uh, you know to, to restore the locomotive and we plan to operate it on this uh, Nashville and Eastern Railroad here in Nashville and uh, heads east, the uh, trackage all the way to Monterey. Uh, more than likely we'll, uh, we'll be doing regular runs to Watertown once we are restored and operating. Uh, and we're looking at about probably about three to four years and that's going to be dependent upon of course fundraising. Uh, right now we do have uh, some capital we're working with but we're always you know, we, we still have a, it's a big project, so big project. there's a, uh, you know, there, there's money yet to be raised. So, so what kind of, what kind of budget do you guys think it's going to take to get this thing up, up and going all the way through? Well, we're thinking of right around $2 million. Okay. So, and where are y'all at now in your fundraising? Well, we've, uh, let's see, we've got, we probably have another 1.5 or so to raise. Okay. So y'all so. about a quarter of the way through it? Correct. Awesome. Yeah. So if they want to find out more information about the locomotive itself, history, whatever, Want to make a contribution? Absolutely. That'd be great. Or yeah. they need to go to do that? www.nashvillesteam.org. Okay, and following you guys on Instagram, Ab Facebook, etc. Absolutely. We're on Facebook, and Instagram, and all that. So. Great. Awesome. Well, let's do a little walk around, and uh, maybe you can just kind of point out a few things and tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So here you see the front end of the locomotive. We have the front smoke box door removed, where we can see the two big steam pipes coming down, supplying steam to the cylinders. Go ahead and keep we talking. Have, we have the petticoat there in the center, uh, and that and the blast dam directly below it. This is where the exhaust steam exited the cylinders once it was used for power and exhausted up the stack. And what that did, that also created a vacuum on the fire and drew all the, the heat through the tubes and flues, um, you know, generating more oxygen through the fire, hotter fire. Also, you see uh, a lot of pipes in there hung vertically from what we call a superheater header. Those are the superheater units. And what that did was, is that when the steam was basically, when the steam in the boiler uh, filled up what they call the dry pipe, it would go to the saturated or wet side of that header. Then, as the throttle was opened up, it would circulate through those units, go back through a series of larger flues, and then return back to a dry site. So we're actually increasing the temperature of the steam and uh, to about 750, 700 to 750 degrees um, and for a drier steam and we could actually get more work uh, out of the steam. So we were looking at this earlier and they were telling me that the, the, the frame on this, this bottom of the locomotive is all one piece and it's cast steel. Correct. Correct. This, uh, this, this locomotive did have a solid one-piece cast steel frame, and the, which included uh, essentially from this seam right here where we've got the pilot, what we call the pilot beam, bolted to. From here all the way to the frame below uh, the cab is all one piece, including the cylinders. All this is cast steel. Cool. We look up through here in between the frame, all this, all these side pieces, all these are cast integral, as well as two main reservoir tanks. That are also cast this is, this is one thing I thought was really interesting is you got these air tanks in here they're just cast right into the frame so they don't have a, a separate separate tank it's just cast right into the frame exactly, exactly. Uh, this locomotive was also built late enough where it was built and equipped with Timken roller bearings throughout other than the side rods at the crank pins those are uh, floating uh, bushings right basically. Uh, let's see, right now we're uh, in preparation, uh, getting some of the handrails off, uh, 
uh, and all that, we'll have a contractor going to come out and actually do an abatement on the locomotive. And, uh, so then we'll, uh, at that point, we'll get it blasted, NDT'd, UT'd, all that good stuff. So we can uh, define our scope of work on this boiler repair and uh, proceed. Very good. We've removed the cab as you can see. So we're going to be completely refurbishing the cab as well. All the sheet metal jacketing you see on the back head and throughout the entire boiler, uh, it'll all be replaced and we'll essentially use that as a pattern. Because um, it's been, you know, been sitting outside for a lot of years. Right. So this was ran on the railroad. It was built in what, did you say 42? Correct. And was in operation until when? Uh, approximately 1952. Okay, so it, only, it only really only saw about 10 years of actual road service. It was right. built really kind of right at the end of the steam era. So, right. uh, which is nice because it has a lot of the modern, more modern, you know, technology on in this thing. And, and it's not quite as old either, so. A absolutely. You know, one thing, uh, you know, interesting that this locomotive the railroad had estimated uh, when it was donated to the park uh, that this thing had operated approximately 750,000 miles well nice thing with these Timken roller bearings they were built for three million mile service wow typically. so uh, we'll never put another two and a quarter million miles on the thing but... probably not <laughs> probably not but yeah at least not in my life <laughs> So the boiler itself, uh, what kind of uh, what, what what kind of repairs and so forth? You ex ex think you're probably going to have to do that? Well, uh, I have a, a pretty good idea that we're going to have some flush patching to do uh, over top of the firebox, uh, what we call the roof sheet. Um, we do have some some wastage up there. Um, we do have some corners that uh, were cracked even when it last ran and were repaired by the railroad. So we'll have to cut those out in the inside corners of the firebox. Uh, we have a few rivets we'll have to redrive and some, some sheets we'll have to replace also inside the firebox. Um, but you know nothing that we hadn't done before, nothing that can't be done. So it's just we just uh, you know, we've got to be as thorough uh, and go through it and inspect every nut and bolt and make sure that what we're putting out there is a safe and a reliable product right and everything you do has to be inspected by the federal railroad administration and be up to their specifications absolutely and that's a lot of work yep. a lot of paperwork right <laughs> so at the end of the end of the day it's worth it I mean, absolutely are, uh, just amazing machines absolutely and uh, uh an iconic machine so one of the, one of the reasons why uh, i'm up here today is that i'm, I'm actually going to be doing a little collaboration with these guys on this project uh, and tell me, tell, tell us a little bit about that. I, most of my viewers haven't seen anything on this shit. I think I may have posted something on Facebook, a picture or whatever, but not a whole lot of information. So right. tell, tell them a little bit about what we're going to be doing to help you guys out. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Keith, thank you very much. But, uh, you know, what Keith is going to help us with is actually rebuilding the Stoker engine. And what the Stoker engine did, it was, well, what it was, was essentially a two cylinder steam, uh, steam engine that, uh, drove a basically like a PTO the best way I can explain it that drove a shaft that was connected to a gearbox and we can actually where it was the Stoker engine was number one was in this compartment right here and it mounted on these big blocks and big pads all right and then there was a trough there was a trough that filled up this space below the coal hopper. And when the coal fell down into that trough, that, that trough contained a screw, an auger screw. And the Stoker engine ran a shaft all the way to the rear end. There was a gearbox back there that turned a, a series of gears that turned the uh, auger shaft. The auger shaft would basically move the, uh, the coal from the tender into this tube right here called the elevator tube and it would push it up to the top and a series of steam jets would blast the coal out in the firebox. So that basically became the, the manual fireman. So you didn't have to shovel on this thing. Yeah. Nowhere near as much. You might every now and then to get the sides or the corners, but the fireman the fireman had it made on this compared to a hand fireman. Cool. And besides that, on some of these larger locomotives uh, like this one is when these things are working at capacity uh, 
uh, it would it was almost humanly impossible for a man to keep up with the, the consumption, especially under full load. Yeah, I'm sure this thing ate a lot of coal and drank a lot of water. And drank a lot of water. <laughs> So the tender itself uh, is in pretty good shape, you think? Are y'all gonna have to do work to this as well? Or what's yep, the plans here? We are gonna do some work. We've actually already done some work. Uh, we've actually repaired and replaced this corner of the tender here. I don't know if you can see the, the weld repair. Right. We've, done. we've put a new floor in it here. Um, but overall, the tender is actually in fairly, fairly good condition. Uh, we will be pulling the trucks out, completely rebuilding the trucks. There's a few more little places uh, on the tender that we will be working on, some uh, upper side of the water legs and a few places in the coal bunker. Um, but the interior actually looks pretty good. There was some, uh, there was two baffles that uh, we'll, we'll be working on, in, interior speaking. Other than that, from the interior perspective, that's, that's all we've got to do as far as, you know, the, the repair inside. And then we'll blast and, 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 uh, and put the appropriate coating. Well, guys, got a little brief introduction to this locomotive. I am really, really pumped about uh, working with you guys on it, and uh, we're going to have a fun time restoring that Stoker engine. That's going to be an upcoming, I'm sure it'll be a series of videos. It's, it's quite involved. Uh, uh, I'll try to get some pictures of that up soon, let you guys take a look at it. We're going to be taking it completely apart, doing a complete rebuild on it, whatever needs to be done. And until we get in it, I really don't know exactly what's going to be need to be done. but. Uh, uh, it'll be fairly involved, and and right. it's gonna be it'll be it should be nice when it gets done, and it'll get put back to use in this historic locomotive. Absolutely, for more generations to enjoy. That's right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Keith. Thank, thank you, me. Shane, for uh, having me out today, and 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 just allowing me to be involved in this project. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And guys, uh, go check out their website. I'll have some links down in the description below, and you can find out more about this uh, locomotive, its history, and again, if anybody would like to contribute toward uh, helping to this project get completed, I'm sure they'll be most uh, grateful for that as well. Absolutely. We, you know, we appreciate everybody. And uh, also, if you want to get involved, we have uh, options to volunteer with us as well. So awesome. it's also on our webpage. Yeah, local folks out here. But how many volunteers do y'all have working on this project right now? Well, right now, I think uh, a little over 100. Uh, not all of them are working on the locomotive. We have volunteers that are, are working on the fundraising side mm -hmm. of things. We've got marketing volunteers. We have admin. So it's all important. Though. Yep. And so even today out here on a, on a, uh, was this a Wednesday afternoon, they got about five volunteers who are out here working today. You probably hear banging and making noise in the background, but that's, that's progress being done. So. That's right. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Shane, for coming. Thank and guys, uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, uh, leave us some comments if you like, and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be sharing more information about this project as time goes on. Thanks for watching, guys.